So today we are going to discuss uh, racism in football, especially the uh, last incident between PSG and Besiktas here uh, in the Champions League. Tom, could you please um, like introduce your opinion about the topic? How do how do you evaluate the situation? Sure thing, North. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on the show once again. If the, if those that do not know me, first name is Tom Green. I work at WLEW Radio in Bad Axe, Michigan in the United States as a news reporter as well as a sports guy. In fact, you can see I'm wearing my Detroit Lions stuff <laughs> as we are beginning to talk here on this show and I am a Manchester United fan as well in the EPL so what we're talking about here is an incident between like you had said Paris Saint-Germain and Bashak Shahir I'm the best the best I could pronounce it there and Demba Ba was involved as well as Enzo Crivelli uh, as um the, but the main guy of course that is the one that is being accused of racism and uh, arguably rightfully so is Pierre Vebo uh, hopefully I uh, or excuse me, uh, the fourth official used the racism on Pierre Vable, uh for a red card. So what happened here was um, Enzo Crivelli um, really took exception to what was said, and Demba Ba talked about it later in the article that I brought up here. And um, he's, uh, uh, let's see, Bashakshi here was talking about not going back out uh, on Tuesday night. And Demba Ba st starts by saying, it started by speaking to the right and to the left and some raised their voices to say, either we all go out or none of us go out. Uh, I was surprised by the reaction of certain players, notably Enzo Crivelli. And I told him, this is Demba, of course, Enzo, if they all go out, you go out. You're 25 years old, you go out. Ironically, I'm 25 years old as well. Uh, if you knew the violence at which he yelled at me to say, no, I'm not going out. These are things that must be eradicated from the football field. And if we don't do anything today, it will continue. He decided not to play on. He was followed by the team. They all stayed and we played the following day. And here's what actually happened here. Bob won a claim for his reaction to the incident. Having started on the bench, he remonstrated with the officials. You never say this white guy, that white guy. But when it's a black guy, you have to say this black guy. And the initial reaction, initial take I have from this is that you it, it surprises me that this is still going on in UEFA. If I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe UEFA started the stop racism campaign in around 2014, 2015 with patches on every single jersey that is being as in Europa or Champions League. It says in whatever language it is, end racism. It surprises me that this thing, this stuff is still going on today. So really, I don't blame Crivelli at all for saying, you know what? No, there's things need to happen here that th this needs to be stopped. We've had a campaign on this for six plus years. Why are, why are our officials berating people of color? This, it's, it, it's totally wrong. We're not, I'm not going to be playing with that official out on the field. We're going to delay this by a day and make sure that, that, that the right thing is done. And so far, we have yet to see the results of UEFA's investigation. But the um, Bashak Shahir pretty much said the smartest thing was to stop playing. We will try to set even more examples in the future, which, yes, they lost the, the match 5-1. to one, But they set an example by saying, hey, this happened. We will not accept it. We are going to delay the match by a day to make sure this official is not here. So my, my question here, were you surprised by the, by the reaction of all the players of the two teams? Um, at first, I, at, at first I was, I had seen, um, I had seen ESPN tell me, Hey, this is, this is called off because of alleged racism. And I'm like, okay, what exactly happened? And then I read the article in and I'm like, well, I can see certainly why that happened. So I, I would say initially, yes, but reading into it, I would say no, because like I said, um, the rate, the stop racism campaign in UEFA has been going on for much longer than it, than it really has here in the, you know, this new wave of stop racism here in the United States. So I would say um, initially, yes, but now, no, not surprised. So my other question here, do you think that racism is deeply inherent in people that it is difficult to uh, root out even by these campaigns and education about the importance of equality between all human beings? 
Yes, here's the thing. And here in the United States, we have a, a lot of people call it systemic racism. Personally, I don't necessarily like that word, but, I, but here's how I stand on it. It is taught. It is taught in the home. It is not necessarily taught in the workplace. Now, people take it from home to the workplace, and that's where the problem is. So really, the problem is more at the house rather than the workplace. So nonetheless, whether or not, whether or not how you see it, it, it is a definitely a deeply rooted problem. And it's something that perhaps is more of a generational problem than it is. And, and I don't mean necessarily from generation to generation. It means the problem has to begin, has to um, begin to be repaired now. And for the future generations, it will become better with time, if that makes sense. So it's taught at the home, really. So my other question here, like, like this incident came from the top of the referees or the top of the people in the sport. It didn't even come from the crowd. Is this more surprising? Like the people who are responsible for this business are not doing the right thing. What about the people who just come to watch? Yes, and and that's another and that's another good point is that if ra um, if the racism is brought from the home to the workplace, and if you have a public workplace like the like the football field, you may even see it on the football field, and it may be taught there from football field to the stands. And that's another thing is that um, really it's really I'm kind of supporting the point that it is rooted, and the roots can be found differently. It's all. Goodness, it can almost seem like an uncontrolled spread like this coronavirus has been for over the past year. But um, yes, you're, you definitely have a good point of that um, if it is brought to the football field and it is heard throughout throughout said football field, it can go on to um, those that are younger and are, and are listening. So it's it's that it, it can definitely be a two way street. So my other question here, like the, um, sure. let's say the people who uh, objected, the, the main objection about this racist incident came from a country or a team that is in a country that is not with a black majority. Like normally this incident would have come from a team that comes from a country with a majority of black uh, colored skin people. How surprising or how praiseable is that? I would say it is quite surprising because, um, like I had said, uh, like the article had said, you never say this white guy, this white guy, but when it's a black guy, you, you seemingly have to say this black guy, when really that's that's a huge problem. Now, we, you would think that countries that have this under control, and I'm not going, and I'm not going to try to play a race card here and say white or black, it would be kind of ironic for me to say it on the show, but you would think that things would be under control in a country that has the racism under control. But when it happens, I mean, it's, I guess it's a more of a person to person ordeal where somebody from a place that was taught that this type of racism was okay when it's not, um, goes into a place where it's not, then they find out right away, Hey, this is not okay. So yes, it is surprising that this comes from a place where you would think this is all under control. So my other question here, like, mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, how much will this be repeated in the future? Do you think it's going down or it's increasing? I think it will honestly depend on what happens with this investigation. If there is no punishment, then this could, this could, base, this could set up how these sort of incidents will be treated in the future. So it's, it's more of a how much are you going to allow for this? If you're not going to allow any, then perhaps you may suspend this referee for the rest of the season. If you are going to allow it some, then maybe you give him a short suspension or not. I am not advocating for a full season suspension, but I am saying that it depends on this ruling because this is kind of the first ruling that we've had since UEFA has come back for an entire season. The, we are start, we are, ever so slightly starting to lift out of this pandemic. But of course, uh, when we're in public, we still have to wear our masks and all that because 
the vaccine is only beginning to be distributed. But I think this, it, it really depends on how this incident, uh, what, how the investigation plays out, to be completely honest with you. And what are your main thoughts to avoid certain, uh, like similar incidents in the future? How to avoid incidents in the future would be, um, it's easier said than done, but treat everyone equally. And, and you have to ask yourself, um, is this how I would treat a white person? If you're talking to a black person, the same thing on the, the other way around. In fact, a good example of this is Detroit, Detroit Lions quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Uh, in the off season, he was at a training complex in Atlanta. Uh, with a few of his team, a few of his teammates, one practice he took like three or four of his white teammates, and a different, and a different practice he took three or four of his black teammates. When the white teammates were on the field, nobody, nobody around the area said a word. They, everybody in the city, pretty much just let the practice go on like nothing was happening. When the black players took the field with Stafford, they had multiple calls to the police, and the police said, "You need to get the hell out of here." That's a problem. So really uh, easier said than done, but you have to just think to yourself, okay, is this how I would treat um, a person of the other color, whether it be white or black? It's kind of, you have to keep the even keel. Um, if you're talking to a black man, perhaps like the ref was, okay, is this how I'm going to punish a white person or talk to a white person? The same thing goes around. So three and short answer, treat each other better, but easier said than done. It has been amazing talking to you, Tom, as usual, like, and congratulations for your Lions team as well for getting these points so fast. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> you bet. Good to have a halftime conversation with you, Noor. Glad to, glad to be back on the show with you. Hope you're staying safe in this crazy pandemic time. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. You bet.